So we have a security system here, 23 security cameras. We uh, have a facility that's all key coded, which means that we can track all of our employees from access from any parts of the lab. So this area here is our intake area. And from the intake area, as you can see, is where we first examine the products or uh, the cannabis material, plant material that we take in. Okay. So from this phase, we basically come over here in this area. As you can see, we have um, wow. a couple of uh, pounds here of uh, material. But this is nothing, right? Yeah. I mean, how, mu how much will come in here in uh, any go, given we day? We go through between 1,000 to 1,500 pounds a week. 1,000 to 1,500 pounds, damn. Yeah. Okay, and all trim like this, right? Nothing that you would actually want to put in a bowl and smoke, uh, right? No, Some, sometimes yeah. flour. Sometimes uh, we have clients that want to produce uh, and keep the natural terpenes and the natural flavor profiles. So we do get flour sometimes coming in. And from this point, we basically intake the product. And from the intake process, we uh, make sure that we lab test all of our samples. So when we lab test our samples, we create a C rating. So the C rating means that pesticide-free, mold-free, yeast-free, bacterial-free. We have to physically grind it into the smallest uh, size to fit into our extraction of the machines. When you actually grind the materials, you're mixing up the different trichomes, plant materials, and uh, basically have it to where, uh, when you pressurize and pack into a vessel, which is, well, I'll show you the extraction unit, in that vessel, there's no room, there's no air pockets. Mm. So when you actually uh, pressurize that vessel, you have the, the best uh, yield or potential for oil uh, content that comes out of that vessel. So awesome. in here is our grinding area. Right after grinding, you would bring the source material here. Uh -huh. We have four uh, super critical uh, extraction machines. They're made from the corporation called Waters Corporation. Uh, we decided to use these machines based on the fact that they specialize in analytical testing equipment, extraction equipment for the nutraceutical market okay. or industry. How did you learn about all this stuff? Yes, so uh, my journey started um, when my son was diagnosed with autism. Um, he's eight years old now, and I started to um, try cannabis high CBD formulations. And from before you give your son something that you don't know, you research the heck out of it. Mm -hmm. And from that research becomes passion, and that passion becomes, um, you need to learn everything about it. So just why I'm standing here is I'm doing it for my son. And that's the, every single person I talk to from investors to uh, mayors of cities to fire marshals that you know, help us along the way with, with um, building this facility, so why are you doing this? Yeah. Like, well, I have one mission, and that mission is to enhance society and uh, heal the world with cannabis. Because yeah. by doing that, by enhancing society, you do best practices. By healing the world, you figure out what's the best formulation for conditional-based. Mm -hmm. And my, my conditional base I want to heal is autistic children and also um, helping uh, people understand what autism is and how cannabis directly help my son Andrew. It's such important work because there's a lot of oil around. Yeah. Right. And we talked about how some of them are manufactured in places that aren't licensed like BAS necessarily. So the fact that you're here doing it the right way for the right reasons is so important for the industry as a whole too. I think I think that you said the right thing. It's it's the right time, it's the right industry, it's the right people. I think the combination of um, why people invest in certain startups or companies is the scope of work and operators. Mm -hmm. You can have ideas, but if you don't have the right team, yeah. and if you don't have the right systems and Everybody protocols, has ideas. Yeah. It, you, you're not successful. You don't prove your concept. By proving this concept and by creating a lab like this that is transparent, as you can see, this is something that we want to educate everybody, from patients all the way to farmers to lawmakers, is, this is why we built and designed BS Research the way it is. From here, we uh, will do the post-chemistry. So like you said, we're, we're, we marinate the meat, 
we got it to the right uh, condition and size, but it's raw meat. Yep. So the bulk oil that we create, the machines create, is transferred over to our chemistry lab for that fine tuning, which is called winterization. We just left the extraction room, and this is what comes out of the extraction room, correct? With Absolutely. Your yeah, so what we have here is some CO2 extract of cannabis oil. Once we have the raw CO2 extract, we end up putting it through a process called winterization. And that preserves it for the winter? Or winter is coming? Or? Well, the, the term winterization occurs because we actually bring it to sub-zero temperatures because the solubility of the waxes and other undesirable elements of the cannabis oil extract can be removed because they're insoluble in the cold ethanol. In the process of winterization, we would dilute uh, the raw extract into another material, um, which we then homogenize uh, with these stirs, and then that would go into the freezer for a certain period of time, depending upon the batch size and the protocols for that specific material and then it's winterized. So this would be what would be characterized as an amber oil. Okay. So it would be darker in color, all right? Um, and this would be of a potency between 60, 65% uh, cannabinoid content. Okay, got it. So we're getting closer to the end concentrate levels. Actually, we have some right over here. So if you look in this small jar, you can see this golden kind of clear oil. And that oil is, is known as clear in the industry, okay. um, but we know it in chemical terms to be a distillate or a distilled product. And in a larger container, it would look more like this. So it takes on a slightly different color. Uh, it's with... still pretty transparent there. Exactly. Yeah. So this brings up a really interesting question. I've heard anecdotally that the darker the oil, the less pure or less healthy it is. So this is kind of what the end result looks, but how much truth is that? I mean, if you're looking to smoke a vape cartridge, should you look for something more clear? Well, there's different preferences. The clearer the product um, doesn't necessarily imply that it is of higher potency. Okay. There are certain practices within the industry where people do um, use other materials that would still add no color to it, but would lower the potency. But in this case, um, what you would have is you would have certain elements of the plant that are not removed yet in the distillate and that are present in the amber. Now, those aren't necessarily any less safe, but they aren't uh, cannabinoids in their own right. Other things that we do collect in this process when we refine the, the cannabis plant material all the way to the final product is a lot of the material that leaves the cannabis plant is very desirable. These are the terpenes that, that we know and love. Those phytochemicals, have medicinal properties and they also give the characteristic odor and flavor that, that, that people uh, familiarize themselves with when they think of cannabis. Yep. So what we do is we're able to reintroduce those terpenes back into our final products based upon what type of matrix it's going into, whether it's an edible, a vape product, a... Because um, otherwise the final capsule. product would be totally odorless, totally tasteless, correct? Yes, no. if everything works perfectly. If everything goes as planned, it's so, and then you have to add everything back in. So depending on what the final product is gonna be, you add in each terpene there, correct? Exactly, yeah. and it depends on what we're designing as well. Yeah. If we're trying to design something that would have anti-inflammatory effects for a certain patient group, okay. then we would isolate certain terpenes that we'd like to use in that profile. I'm just trying to do one thing well is to formulate oil from a plant that I believe in that's helped my son personally and find a way to share it with the rest of the world. Wow, yeah, so yeah. basically, if it's good enough for your son, it's good enough for the rest of the world. And that's what we have to stop, start operating, right? We have to start taking care of the people around us and making sure that the stuff that we're distributing is the best quality, the C-level cleanness that you were talking about, right? Well, not only that, but who's doing it, right? Who's part of your team? Why are you doing it? How are you doing it? Those questions that I've had when I was um, uh, looking for um, formulations and medicine for my son, there's no answers to that. So really our business plan, or you can say a business plan that we had, was answering all of those questions. And then finally coming up with a solution 
and the blessings and the responsibility to do just that. To answer the how you're doing it, who you're going to work with, and what you're doing, what's the outcome. Hmm. And it doesn't come cheap. I mean, this is a pretty sophisticated facility. Right. Talk about your fundraising to date a little bit. Um, we did a uh, friends and family round. We raised about 1.5 million. It was a convertible note with a 18 month uh, repayment or when we do a series A raise, they would all convert yep. at a 20% discount. Okay. Um, from there, that 1.5 quickly got utilized yeah. as any startup and you basically go, holy crap, I need more money. It's gonna be five times more than what I So think. we're at a 3.5 to $4 million all in um, from uh, development to permitting fees to fire sprinkling systems to uh, chemical resistant epoxy floors, explosion proof freezers. I mean, the list goes on and on when you're trying to be compliant, yep. when there is no playbook, there aren't, excuse my English, aren't, not a word, but there is not something here that you can follow. Mm -hmm that you can reproduce this because right. this is a brand new field. There's no precedent. Anything. There's yeah. a brand new uh, um, leadership. And we just felt that we had to lead by example and do the right thing. Yeah, I mean, doing it right is not cheap. Right? No. You know, it's no. easy to cook up some concentrates in your basement and do it illegally at a small scale. But when you scale up like this and you got the fire inspector in here and you need the HVAC system, you got to raise a lot of money. You're you're even raising more now, correct? You're just telling me that you're finishing up a round. How's that, how's that going? Uh, we're doing a Series A round, and uh, it's going very well because now we have proof of concept. Any startup, you got to have proof of concept. Mm -hmm. You got to have ability to scale, and then you got to sell your product. If your product is not good, no one's going to buy it. Mm -hmm. So uh, if I do a hindsight looking back, is my main question is that, why hasn't there been more opportunities for um, startups like ourselves to be in this industry? Hmm. So, Why do you think that is? Regulation and just maybe the wrong mix of people. Got it. So give me a little bit of the pitch to investors. I mean, how big is this concentrates opportunity? Uh, let's put it this way. Uh, we know operators that probably can sell 45,000 pens excuse me, vape pens, like say half a gram yep. in a month. Okay. And that's three or four dispensaries. Wow. In California alone with 38 million people in the population, but in the medical side, you have a few thousand collectives. Mm -hmm. I think that's consumption a day is about a hundred kilos of oil. Wow. In a day. Wow. Okay. So the total addressable market here is massive. Yes. How about the risk side of it? I mean, how do you get investors comfy with doing this? I mean, uh, it's still right. a Schedule One drug. Right. Two eighty E doesn't allow you to write off any of your business expenses federally. Right. What's your response to some of those things? My response is, if you don't have a permit or you don't have a city going to back you up to uh, allow you to uh, operate safely and invest into a capital raise that will you can own your equipment and you can operate with talent, a talent pool that will have payroll, have uh, medical benefits and stay with you for you know three to four years as any startup grows, mm. don't invest into this industry. Mm. By having the permit, by having have to purchase the building and be our own landlords, investors saw the vision. They saw our scope of work, our mission statement, and that we could be successful for scaling up. Like yeah. any business, you gotta scale up. But that's really important. There's a certain level of exclusivity here. Right. right? You're the first and only currently uh, right. facility of its kind. Right. How many more are there gonna be? I mean, how much do you think about that? Is there competition coming? People are gonna think I'm weird by saying this, but I want more licenses. I want more operators because then it raises the bar. It, it makes my job a lot easier to go to a city that may have someone else that had to go through the hoops that we've had to go through with Berkeley. And don't get me wrong, they supported us, but it was a, it was a long list of to-dos that we had to fulfill. So if I had to do this every single city and municipality to get 
a lab going, I don't have the time. Hmm. But if there are other companies that pop up with permitting and we're one of the 10 in that city to make a great product, that's great. Less work. And why not just create a brand of your own? I mean, you're, you're white labeling right. for a lot of your, your co-branding, but why not just you know, make BAS concentrates and that's it? Well, our main, our main premise and focus is to make formulations and great oil to support other companies to be able to share in our ability to do just that, just make oil. Mm -hmm. um, however, you, like I was explaining through our other process of extraction, how long you want to cook it and what quality you want, that's not what for us to decide. We want to perfect the process and the, our brand is to make bulk oil, formulate it, and support companies to utilize our, our base product. Uh, so just shifting gears a little bit, I love to connect kind of the professional work that you do during the day with just like what kind of consumer you are, you know? So right. what kind of cannabis do you like? What kind of oils? You know, what, what's your deal? Um, I've never medicated with cannabis. Okay. Okay. Um, grew up in a very conservative family. Um, chose my profession to be a holistic practitioner, but I've tried a lot of CBD. Right. So if you don't know the difference between CBD and THC, uh, we're not going to get into that. Yeah. Non-psychoactive, but I've I've just never um, chose that as a lifestyle or advice to um, be medicated with cannabis. But I had to try my formulations that I was giving to my son with CBD. But did some of that have THC to make me euphoric? Not really, because I try to eliminate that part of the formulation to help my son. So, Got yeah, it. people ask me all the time, uh, are you kidding me? You don't medicate with You know, it's cannabis, actually more common than you it think. Is. I guess my question is, do you feel like an outsider ever? Does it ever feel weird when people say to you, like, oh, you don't want to get high, man? Like, I do. To be honest with you, I do. And um, it's, it's, um, it's a fine line, right, between... I think the stigma that I have is that when I was pitching for funding, when I was talking to uh, uh, law, lawmakers and cities and mayors, they asked me that question, have you smoked marijuana? And mm -hmm. I said no. Whether that made it easier for me to raise money or whether that was more convincing to someone that I'm not, excuse the term, pothead, mm -hmm. I don't know. It kind I, of skews I, both ways, I it guess. Is, it is yeah. skewed both ways and I'm, I'm, I'm happy where I am. And I'm happy being um, a uh, co-founder and operator of a cannabis uh, extraction lab, and I've never medicated with cannabis. Yeah, I think it's a really important distinction. It's a proof point of how good this business opportunity is. Yes. It's not a lifestyle business for you. A no, lot of people not. that make edibles or they run a dispensary, right. they just love cannabis. But for you, it's, it's about dollars and cents and, of course, the great work that you've done with your son and right. people like him. Right. No, understanding how to monopolize by taking a plant and making it to a commodity. Hmm. And um, that's, that's, I think, the, the sole reason why people believe in our, our company and why they invest in our company is awesome. our belief system and passion behind hmm. uh, making it a commodity and monopolizing in the sense where uh, if you're the leader or something, you got to have the best product that actually works. Hmm. Very well said. Plug some stuff here. BASResearch.com. Any Twitter handles, Instagram, any social stuff that you guys do? BAS Research is our basically uh, brand and everywhere. Um, we uh, pride in, in, in what that means. And that's... What does it mean? What's BAS right. stand for? Best Agricultural Services. Okay. All right. Got so it. without the agricultural division of this industry, you don't have a plan. Mm -hmm. Without the best practices and services, you don't have the science in the system. By putting those together, we, can tr we basically, that's the supply chain. And by controlling the supply chain, you have a product that you can trust in. Awesome, trust is trust everything. Is that's everything. why you tested multiple times, right. four or five times, I was hearing in the lab. Good stuff, it makes me feel good that the concentrates I'm putting into my body, or maybe from here on out that I'm right. putting into my body, right. are being created with such care and science and really thinking through all these different elements. So thank you for the great work that you do and for having us all here. Yep. And uh, thanks guys for watching. We'll uh, see you next time.